Okay, so now we're going to have an example of what we had just arrived, where we have a 2 by 2 matrix that will have an eigenvalue of multiplicity 2, algebraic multiplicity, but then when it comes time to trying to find the geometric multiplicity, we'll see that it's only 1. So we'll need a generalized eigenvector so that we can um, take this defective matrix and still be able to solve this system. The system is x prime equals this matrix A times x. Let's go find the eigenvalue. We can use this shortcut equation or not. It's totally up to you. So the trace of the matrix is the sum of the diagonal. So that's going to be a 4. And the determinant of the matrix will be equal to also 4. So the equation is lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 4. It's going to be equal to 0. And that factors nicely to be lambda plus 2 quantity squared equals 0. 2 is an eigenvalue with multiplicity 2. Now let's go find the eigenvector. The eigenvector is the solution to the equation a minus 2i times the vector v is going to be equal to 0. So what we're going to do is subtract 2 along the diagonal. That's what a minus 2i is. So 0 minus 2 gives a negative 2. 4 minus 2 will give us a 2. And then we're going to try to find basically a representative of the null set of this system. And we end up with that matrix there, negative 2, negative 2 with the, um, with the 0, then 2, 2, 0. Ultimately, this guy will row reduce to be 1, 1, 0, and then 0, 0, 0. What does this mean to you? Well, it's going to mean to us, if we call this sort of the x and y, not, not, not the x from before, but just uh, general um, variables x and y, then what we're going to have is that y is free and x will depend on y. By the first equation, x is the opposite of y. When you have a free variable, then you're going to be allowed to let that be anything you want it to be. We're going to choose that variable to be 1. Then that would make the other variable x to be equal to negative 1. So we have our vector v, and it's negative 1, 1. And it goes along with the eigenvalue, who is 2. Multiplicity 2, but uh, algebraic multiplicity 2, but geometric multiplicity 1. And so we're in search of another vector. Um, the solution that goes along with this is um, e to the lambda t v. So this goes together, and we get e to the 2t times this vector v. So this is one part of our solution. The other part we're going to call x1, and it's built off of that. What we're going to do is come up with a formula that says e to the lambda t times v1 plus t v0. And so the, um, the 2 comes in from the lambda, and now it's our job to find v1 and v0. And sometimes we call it v0. But there's three equations that govern those guys, and here, here they are. It's really two equations. Um, we have a minus lambda i quantity squared is v1, uh, times v1 is equal to 0. Um, this, this next guy here is to make sure that we're linearly independent, that a minus lambda i on v1 is not 0, so that v1 is not an eigenvector. And then the third equation is that the way you get v0 is by doing exactly a minus lambda i and, and multiplying it by v1. It's not supposed to be 0, and what it is is v0. So we're going to satisfy these equations to find the v1 and v0. The first one is going to be the one that gets us started. The fact that a minus lambda i quantity squared on v1 is equal to 0. These equations were derived in the um, video before, the part 1 video. Okay, And this linear independence comes from the fact that making sure that v1 is not an eigenvector. Okay, great. So let's look at exactly what a minus lambda i quantity squared is. Lambda is 2. So a minus 2i quantity squared. Now we saw what a minus 2i looks like. This is a minus 2i. And now we want to square that. So we take two of those and multiply it out. When you see a matrix full of uh, factors that you could factor out, then do that. It makes the calculation easier. We could do it for both. Take out the 4. And what's left, when we go to multiply this, what happens is we get a matrix full of zeros. We get positive 1, but then minus 1, 0. Then we get positive 1, then minus 1, 0 again. Negative 1, then 1, 0. And then negative 1 and 1, 0. So we get the 0 matrix. So it turns out that a minus 2i 
quantity squared is zero itself. This equation that, that has to be true then gives us some freedom. doesn't really matter what v1 is. a minus 2i quantity squared itself is already zero. So we have freedom to choose v1 to be whatever we want. we got to make sure, though, that v1 is not an eigenvalue. We've got to make sure the v1 that we choose isn't um, a, lin a linear um, um, a linear combination of the, the original vector v. And so um, a, a, a multiple of that. So here we go. We um, Generally, when you have freedom of choice like this, you want to make things simple by making one part 1 while the other part is 0. And so this doesn't have to be the choice, but here it is. We choose v1 to be equal to 1, 0. By choosing v1 being equal to this, we then need to go find out what v0 is. Remember, just to make sure that this guy is an eigenvector. We know what the eigenvector is, but just to make sure, we go and multiply this out and make sure we don't get zero. In fact, what we are going to get will be what we call v naught. So multiplying this out, basically we're getting the first column here. We're getting the fact that we're getting a negative two, then a zero, then we're getting a two, then a zero. We're getting the first column. This guy is not zero. That's good. It's not an eigenvalue, an eigenvector situation. And um, what, what we call that guy is v naught. We have these equations to solve. We want to make sure that a minus 2i quantity squared on v1 is 0. We made sure that was true by finding the v1 that made it happen. And then the fact that a minus 2i on v1 is equal to v naught. Make sure that happens. And when we were picking our v1, we want to make sure that it isn't some constant times um, the eigenvector from before and to do that we just make sure that a, mi a minus a um, minus 2i on v1 was not zero and so we have it v naught v1 and we put these together to make up our x1 it's e to the lambda t with v1 plus t v naught And we're done. The final thing is to put them together in a linear combination. We have this guy here who is C1 X naught. And then this guy here who is C2 X1. Okay, and you could you could write them in the following way where you factor out the, the T and so it becomes C1 times one vector and C2 times another vector. And therefore we have solved the system there are, there um, each each row here is a solution to the system. We could have written it as this manner. It doesn't look as nice and concise as as what we have here, but we could have written it as uh, c1 uh, negative c1 e to the 2t um, plus c2 minus 2c2 e to the all the, I guess e has got e to the 2t, e to the 2t uh, with a t on it. So that, that's the first guy. And then the second guy, the second row is uh, c1 e to the 2t and then c2 e to the 2t with a 2t on it. I guess it's another copy of this guy. And that is your solution x. It's better off writing it this way or even this way. Okay? So that is 2 by 2 defective and the way that's going to happen for us is that um, we have um, lambda has algebraic multiplicity 2 but geometric multiplicity 1 this is the situation that we're in and we just did an example of it next up we'll switch it up where we're going to go to uh, 3 by 3 and see what happens when we need one generalized eigenvector and then for the final video we're going to see what happens when we need two generalized eigenvectors all right great